everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. At the end of each year, I like to do a little bit of a wrap up video, looking back at everything that I actually managed to sew in this last calendar year. And that is this video. I do this for a few reasons. One, it actually helps me to remember that even if I feel like I haven't accomplished very much in the year, I've probably done more than I realize. Two, it helps to remind me of projects that I may very well have already forgotten about. And three, looking at what I was and actually what I wasn't able to accomplish, it helps me to set more realistic goals for the future. I highly recommend doing an exercise like this at the end of the year, both for sewing projects and honestly even for your life in general, even just if you're taking a little note of all of the positives in your year. You could do it as a little video like I'm doing. You could share pictures on Instagram or Facebook, which I'm actually also doing. Or you could even just like write everything down on a piece of paper or as a note in your phone. This little record can be really helpful when you're looking back at this year many years from now, as it will give you a quick little reminder of all of your accomplishments throughout 2023. And of course, everyone moves at a different pace. So even if we're just talking about sewing, your achievements don't have to be actually completing a costume. Maybe you designed something fun in your head or on paper, or you sewed your first sewing project ever, or maybe you made your first cosplay, or you made an entire wardrobe. I know for me, I felt like I moved a lot slower this year than in years past, and I sewed a lot less. And that's okay. To be honest, a lot of times the only thing that really kept me sewing at all was because I enjoy making my sewing vlogs for you all, and I don't want to let you down by having a week with no videos. Though, of course, as I'm sure you are all aware, even before we get into the sewing portion of this wrap up, I made far less videos for you this year as well than I have for most of the life of this channel, because between my new job that I got this year and theater, I just haven't had as much time for sewing and video production as I used to. And I really wanna give a big thank you to you all for sticking with me even when I'm no longer making two videos every week most of the time. But anyway, you are probably here to look at my sewing projects, so let's start back in January. All of these project videos can of course be found in my sewing vlog playlist, by the way, which is linked down below in the description. I began the year already a little bit into my Aurora cosplay project with the skirt assembled, and then by the end of the month, I was actually partway through three different projects. It's honestly crazy to think about the fact that I was somehow working on Aurora, Felicity, and Peaches and Cream Barbie all at the same time, but I was also still only partially employed at that time because I was working as an understudy in a professional production of Cinderella, so I had more time on my hands, and I also knew that that would be changing in February when I started my new current job that I have. So by the end of January, Aurora was nearly complete, needing only the neckline decoration and that like hanging sleeve detail added. And then Felicity was actually quite a ways along as well. In fact, by the end of January, Felicity lacked only the bodice trims and the various accessories, all of which I quickly finished up in the beginning of February. I had also already started assembling the bodice for Peaches too. After finishing everything for Felicity in February, I took a moment to make a quick project that I had already forgotten about when I went to go put this video together, my ivory silk 18th century market bonnet. And then I dove fully into Peaches, which turned out to be far more work than I realized it would be. I got Peaches to a point where she was mostly wearable, meaning no skirt ruffle and no stole yet, and then my serger broke, <laughs> and Peaches had to be temporarily put aside. Which meant, of course, that it was back to Aurora, finishing up the embellishments and those hanging sleeves. Then I returned to Peaches, finishing her literally just in time to wear to Emerald City Comic Con the first weekend of March, which is what I had been making all three of the outfits for in the first place. And I even wound up winning a Judge's Choice Award for Aurora at the Sunday Cosplay Showcase, so that was really cool. I do have a vlog for my weekend at Comic-Con too, in case you're interested, so I will link that down below as well. After Comic-Con, I needed a little breather from big projects, so I made an 1840s dress and bonnet for one of my American Girl dolls. After which point I dove headlong into my next big project, my 18th century pastoral gown. 
Because I was also in rehearsals for Titanic the Musical back in March, this 18th century pastoral gown wound up going a little bit more slowly and I actually didn't finish it until mid-April. Luckily though, my next project was a little bit less elaborate. I made myself a fun vintage inspired spring dress. My tulip pocket dress, which was from the 1950s, out of floral fabric that I actually found at Goodwill. This dress still took a little bit longer than I had anticipated and I actually finished it in the beginning of May. Which was good because it meant that I could wear it on the trip to the UK that my mom and I took in May. I had a wonderful time there as England is actually my favorite place I have ever visited and London is my favorite large city in the whole world and I cannot wait to go back. I did also vlog my trip so if you're interested in my travel vlogs I will link those videos down below as well. Once I returned from England, it was crunch time to make my next project. Luckily, it wasn't too difficult. It was a cosplay of Kirsten's summer dress, which I made out of thrifted fabric for a picnic that was held on June 10th. And then, because neither of the fabrics had arrived for the next two projects that I wanted to make, I decided I would just go to Joann's and buy beautiful sparkly fabric and make a crazy, over-the-top modern princess dress. So I found various glittery and sequined blue fabrics and I made myself the most fanciful and sparkly dress that I could come up with, which I finished at the very beginning of July. Except naturally it took just a little bit longer than I had anticipated because of all those layers of fabric, meaning that it was once again time to buckle down and make myself two more new costumes right before costume college. The first was a pink gingham Barbie inspired dress to wear to both the Barbie movie and also the world of Barbie in LA. And the second was of course Rose's swim dress from Titanic, which I was also going to be wearing to visit the Queen Mary. The Barbie dress actually went together very quickly since I used the same pattern I had used for the princess dress. So I finished that in only about a week. And then it was on to Rose. Naturally, I had to pick a dress with ombre dyeing and layers of chiffon and then I had to cram all of the making of it into the lead up to costume college to the point where I was still working on the sash in the hotel room the night before I wore it on the Queen Mary. That is usually something I do not do. Luckily, though I'm still not totally in love with the sash, the dress overall was definitely a success and despite a few issues with the new hotel, I did have a good time at Costume College and I do plan to return again in 2024. And of course, my Costume College vlog is also linked down below in the description. Because I had a work trip right after Costume College, I had a little bit more time off from sewing in the beginning of August before starting in on my next American Girl cosplay, which was Mary Ellen's 1950s strawberry dress. It turned out that it was a little bit more complicated of a project than I had anticipated, but I did finish it by the end of August in time to wear it to another American Girl cosplay picnic. If you're ever interested in joining us for these picnics, last year we hosted them four times, like every three months, and I always share the event information over on my Instagram at Lady Rebecca Fashions. We don't currently have one on the calendar though. Anyway, it was good that I had finished it by the end of August because by that time I had also already started rehearsals for my next show, which was Seussical. So up next in September, I dove into a new 19 teens corset because my old 19 teens corset was made way back in 2012 and it is very much dying. I finished the corset mid-September before moving on to another 1950s wrap dress and the start of my Halloween sewing, my Haunted Mansion jumper dress, which was part of the Grim Grinning Garb collab with Stephanie Canada. Then it was time to really buckle down for the Halloween sewing. For a quick week, while waiting on other fabric to arrive, I started in on my 1830s pumpkin dress. But then I switched eras and turned to my next cosplay, Katrina Van Tassel's black and white striped dress from Sleepy Hollow, which I finished just in time for our spooky cemetery visit at the end of the month. Then of course it was back to my 1830s pumpkin ensemble for which I also made myself a matching pelerine and a new bonnet. And I finished all of that in mid-November. And then it was on to a project which you're probably getting very sick of at this point because I know I am. It's moving so slowly, but it is my 1883 Gilded Age Christmas bustle dress. Personally, I tend to get a bit bored of a project if it takes more than like three or four weeks. And because I've actually taken a few weeks off from this project here and there while working on it, it feels like this one has taken even longer than it actually has. 
So one of the weeks I took off was to make myself a new Christmas dress, which I upcycled a thrifted Christmas tablecloth into a wonderful plaid jumper. And then another week off was to make the 1870s deep dive video that you saw earlier this week. So if you haven't watched that yet, definitely make sure to go check that out. And I also took off the week of Christmas for my parents' visit up here. As of when I'm filming this video, which is December 28th, the Christmas special dress is actually still not finished. That said, I really, really do think that I'm going to finish it by the end of the year, aka this weekend, as I don't have that much going on this weekend, and the one big thing I have to do is actually a sewing day with friends, and there's really only three things on the dress that are even left to do. But by the time you're seeing this video, it won't actually be done yet, probably. There will be two more videos on that project yet to come, so the remaining videos on that project will be coming out into 2024, regardless of when I actually finish it, aka 2023. And that brings us right up to now and the end of the year. Now, I know normally I do an updated sewing plans video at the beginning of the year, but since my last sewing plans video came out back in September instead of the summer like I normally do it, I would honestly really like to hear from you on if you even want an updated plans video yet. So please do let me know down in the comments whether you want a new one of those videos or if I should hold off on doing that video and wait until later. I'd also like to hear from you about how your projects went this year. Did you finish everything that you wanted to? Did you make anything that you're particularly proud of? Please do let me know down in the comments. Naturally, there were at least a few other projects that I had planned to make this year that I never wound up getting around to, which seems to pretty much always happen. But on the other hand, a lot of the projects that I did make were ones that I had not originally planned to make, so I feel like it all kind of balances out. And I'll talk more about those ones that I didn't get to whenever I do release that updated plans video, as I think they're actually all still on my to sew list. But anyway, that's going to be it for me for today and this video, and actually for this year. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon, and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and then sometimes additional costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, you do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I also could not make all of these videos without the support of all of my wonderful Patreon patrons, so a humongous thank you to all of my patrons, especially those of you at the Romantic, Victorian, and Edwardian level tiers, who are Jean, Janelle, Dan, Audra, Emily, Kim, Janet, Liz, Kimberly, Nurse Anita, Chaos Chan, Linda, and Jen. Thank you all so, so much for your support, and thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a happy New Year's and a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!